Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call tonight's council meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilmember Armendariz. Thank you. We don't have an invocation. Uh, so moving on to item two, city clerk's report on posting the agenda and also roll call. Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. Um, the po posting of the agenda was done on Thursday, March 3rd at 9.55 a.m. Councilmember Armadares? Here. Councilmember Bracco? Here. Councilmember Hilton is absent. Uh, Councilmember Lero Munoz? Present. Councilmember Marks? Here. Councilmember Tobar is absent. And Mayor Blankley? Here. Okay. Um, I'd like to announce or send our condolences to Councilmember Tovar, whose mother passed away last Friday. Just let people know that. Okay. Under orders of the day, I don't have anything to announce. Item 1.3 is employee introductions. I'm going to start with uh, recreation. Adam Hennig, do you want to come up and introduce your peeps? Actually, it's just peep. Okay, peep. <laughs> All right, I'd like to introduce uh, Vince Batista. Uh, a familiar face is back with Gilroy Recreation. Vince Batista has returned to as a recreation coordinator. He began working for the city in 2015 as a part-time recreation leader and has served youth and adult uh, sports programs, special events, summer camps, at-risk youth, and contractors. He quickly progressed to full-time work with the city as a recreation specialist and then as a recreation coordinator. He'll oversee independent contract instructors, city-run youth sports programs, volunteers, and will serve as a co-staff liaison to the Youth Commission. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology and is pursuing a master's degree in athletic administration. He currently resides in Hollister with his sons and wife, Danielle. In his spare time, he enjoys the outdoors, sports, and participating in local community events. Please join me in welcoming Vince. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, council, Mayor, I uh, just want to actually first thank you guys for all the hard work that, that you guys put in. I know today is the first day in person, so thank you. Uh, secondly, just like to, um, I'm grateful, grateful to be in this position, and I'm very excited and look forward to working with our community again, community of, of Gilroy. So, and um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> Okay, Chief Wyatt, are you going to do the promotions of your peeps? There are two of these. Thank you, Honorable Council. Um, like to first, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have them come up here and then I'll read a brief bio of uh, Captain Stephen Hayes. So uh, Captain Stephen Hayes was born and raised in Armadero, uh, Texas. He is a Christian, baptized at age 14 on Father's Day. He's the oldest of, uh, I'm sorry, he's the oldest child raised with three younger sisters. His family moved to Hollister when he was in high school. Stephen began his career with the Hollister Fire Department as a firefighter EMT and worked on the ambulance as a paramedic. Stephen states that he is blessed with his wife of 11 years, uh, Nahal, and his two, two daughters, Ariana, nine, and Gianna, seven. They live in Morgan Hill. Captain Hayes was hired by the city of Gilroy in August of 2006 as a lateral firefighter paramedic. He was promoted to fire engineer on August of 2013, and obviously he was recently promoted to fire captain uh, of, this, of this department. Uh, his hobbies include motorcycle riding and any hobby that either of his two daughters are interested in. Uh, currently, it's uh, rollerblading. Captain Hayes' uh, current career passion is making the fire service safer. He currently is, is assigned as the drone tactical paramedic team with the Gilroy uh, Police Department, actually as part of a team of the Gilroy Police Department. And our current goal 
is improving safety for public safety and the community we serve. Thank you. Honorable Mayor and Council, I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you guys for the opportunity to serve in a higher capacity. And city staff, Leanne, uh, the, I know a tremendous amount of work goes into these uh, promotional processes, so um, I want to thank them for that. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, second promotion, he wasn't able to make it today. That's Carlos Hernandez. He was recently promoted just two weeks ago to fire engineer. Uh, Carlos uh, began his career with the city of Gilroy on November 2006. He's a 16-year veteran. He originally came from Napa County and worked six years, six years as a paramedic there. He's uh, served on numerous projects and committees. Uh, he, was, he continues to be our field training officer as a mentor and uh, as a, an evaluator of our new, newly hired paramedics. He was also uh, recently the COVID vaccinator, both uh, the mobile in-home program and the pop-up clinics. He was able to vaccinate uh, literally hundreds of people. Uh, he's also an uh, integral part of the community paramedicine program, and he was also uh, recently a speaker uh, for the Hispanic community for wildfire awareness. Away from work, uh, he spends most of his time raising his three beautiful children. That's where he's at right now. Um, Carlos welcomes the new challenges that come along with his new role as a fire engineer and is excited for this new chapter in his career with the Gilroy Fire Department. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, and congratulations to Carlos. All right, Daryl, Jordan, your peeps. Madam Mayor, thank you. I do have peeps, and I've got three of them tonight. Uh -huh. Super excited about that. <laughs> uh, Matthew, you want to come up here? Uh, first, I'm going to introduce tonight is Matthew Jimenez with our maintenance team. Matthew joins the city of Gilroy with four years of maintenance experience and also brings a diverse skill set to our parks and landscape team and public works. Included in a skill set lies carpentry, painting, electrical, road maintenance, concrete pouring, plumbing, as well as landscaping and tree maintenance. In his rise to becoming a maintenance worker with the City of Gilroy, Matthew previously worked with County of San Benito and the City of Hollister, which he progressed his skills with hand tools, power tools, chainsaws, pole saws, weed whackers, you name it. He also is no stranger, to he no stranger to heavy equipment with experience operating backhoes, skip loaders, rollers, mowers, and gap machines for paving roads and potholes. His knowledge as an electrician apprentice is a bonus for us. Matthew grew up in Hollister, California, born and raised. He graduated from San Benito High School. He was noted for four years perfect attendance. Is that true? <laughs> okay. <laughs> During his four years in high school, Matthew loves going to car shows with his family and girlfriend, who is here tonight, uh, dirt biking, riding bikes, and hiking. He is glad to be joining the City of Gilroy Parks team, and thanks you for welcoming him, Matthew Jimenez. I just want to say uh, thank you, City Council and Mayor. Um, really appreciate being here and giving me the offer to be working with you guys. So thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Lucas, Lucas, the next person I'd like to uh, also introduce for our parks and uh, maintenance team is uh, Lucas Helling. Lucas has been pursuing a career in parks long before he obtained his new position with the city of Gilroy and has an array of experience working in various park settings. While receiving his degree in parks and recreation management from Northern Arizona University, he interned in Pinnacles National Park as a visitor experience intern where he led guided hikes, held interpretive presentations about the park, and coordinated volunteer groups within the park. When his internship ended, Lucas then began working as a ranch hand in San Juan Bautista at an equine sanctuary that rehomed over 500 equine animals. At two and a half years greatly, after two and a half years greatly enjoying his time working as a ranch hand, Lucas moved on to two short seasonal roles, the first being a seasonal maintenance worker for Santa Clara County Parks and Recreation at Coyote Lake County Park, and as a forestry aide for California State Parks at their Monterey District, which is his most recent work experience. Mostly working at Point Lobos State Reserve in Carmel, Lucas 
worked on an overall forest health project by thinning out the forest of dead and diseased trees with chainsaws, chippers, and gas-powered toting machines. Occasionally, Lucas was lucky enough to have worked in the Big Sur area as well, completing tasks and projects for state parks in some of the most pristine areas that are not even open to the public. Lucas is very happy to have been offered a position for the city of, of Gilroy, the city in which he lives and is ready to contribute. He is an avid recreationist and spends a majority of his non-working non time staying active. He particularly enjoys hiking, cycling, trail running, fishing, swimming, weightlifting, and maintaining his overall health. Additionally, he and his girlfriend are passionate about caring for their two horses at home. Lucas? Hello all, um, happy to make your acquaintance. Uh, thank you all for being here, and you know, I'm just excited to be working for the city of Gilroy, um, bringing my talents and skills, hopefully to uh, keep the city of Gilroy growing and progressing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, last but not least, from my water department, Isaac Munoz. Isaac joins the city of Gilroy with five years of experience working in construction, maintenance, and wastewater systems. He'll apply that experience and knowledge to our water team and public works. Previously with the County of Santa Cruz, Isaac worked as a wastewater sanitation maintenance worker, maintaining and repairing various wastewater pump stations, force mains, and gravity pipelines. Isaac started his career with granite rock construction, building his skills in numerous aspects of maintenance work, which have been key to his mastery with hand tools, concrete pouring, trench work, and installing underground piping. Possessing a Class A license, he's also no stranger to operating heavy equipment and has operated backhoes, skip loaders, bobcats, excavators, and dump trucks. His knowledge in disassembling, diagnosing, and repairing water pumps are invaluable and will play a vital role in the city of Gilroy's water needs. He likes to go to the beach and to go fishing on his time off. Isaac? Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure meeting you guys. Um, really grateful for the opportunity to be serving the community of Gilroy, and I look forward to being here for a while. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, before I move on to ceremonial items, I would like to ask anyone who's planning to speak on an item tonight, whether it's on the agenda or not on the agenda, if you could please take a yellow card at either entrance or here at the city clerk so that we don't unnecessarily limit the speaking time and we'll know in advance how many people are wanting to speak on any particular item. And then we also ask that you, when it comes time for your item, if you would please come and sit in the front row so that we can be um, more efficient. All right? Under ceremonial items, we do have one proclamation and it is to um, proclaim Women's History Month for the month of March, so I'm going to go ahead and read that. Whereas American women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our city and our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, and whereas American women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of the life of the city, by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home, and whereas throughout American history, women and girls have made vital contributions, often in the face of discrimination and undue hardship. Courageous women marched for and won the right to vote, campaigned against injustice, shattered countless barriers, and expanded the possibilities of American life. And whereas despite these contributions, the role of American women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of American history. Now, therefore, I, Marie Blankley, Mayor of the City of Gilroy, on this seventh day of March, 2022, along with my colleagues on the City Council, do hereby proclaim March, 2022, as Women's History Month. Okay. All right. Presentations to the council. This is the time on the agenda for anyone who wants to comment on something not on the agenda. Do we have any speakers? Uh, I do not have any speaker cards, Madam Mayor, and only received one public comment that you received prior to this from Donald Haynes. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to reports of council members. Council Member Bracco. Nothing to report. Just echo uh, condolences for... Councilmember Tobar. Councilmember Armendariz. Uh, no report. 
Thank you. Council Member Marks. Uh, yes, I just have a short one. I would like to congratulate the City of Gilroy for winning a $3.9 million Clean California grant that will help beautify the area between Gourmet Alley and Railroad Street. I would like to say thank you to the Downtown Business Association, especially Gary Walton and John Taft, because without their vision, there would be no Gourmet Alley other than just a name on a street sign. And I was kind of hoping we'd have more than just six people in the audience because on the other side of the coin, as much as I'm happy for the city of Gilroy for actually getting this grant, I'm disappointed that a project did not get funded with this grant. Back in December, I had an idea for um, beautifying downtown, and I shared it with Corinne Decker, and she said, I have a grant for you that we can apply for, and it could be funded because this is what it does. And I wanted to put up murals done by local artists on all the back side of the buildings between Lewis and Martin Street. So I thought, well, before we go any further, I needed to get the building owner's permission, which I did. And then I started looking for local artists. And the muralists are all in place. So I was very excited. We went through, got the bids and everything in place. And we waited for the news. And the news came out. Actually, I got word of it today, um, that we were not part of the program because grant money did not go for private businesses. Well, if you know me well enough, and John Biggs used to be a, a former seventh grade student of mine, if you know me well enough, you know I don't take no very kindly. And so I went and I looked up the um, California, uh, the Green California, Clean California grant recipient list. And I found out that some of the cities were using their grant money for private businesses to paint murals on. So I took some screenshots, and Jimmy and I, Jimmy and I have had three conversations today. And I was just like, I don't understand. I, I'm not clear on what's happening. So lo and behold, we're not in the grant. And I haven't told my muralists yet because they're going to be extremely disappointed. But hopefully somehow we can slip in under the beautification part of the grant because it, what I envision is a walking um, mural, basically, a walking gallery for people to go down the back of the alley to see some beauty, to have fun with them. They're going to be interactive murals. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. If we can drum up, it's going to be about 150000 so we'll see if we can drum up some of the money and I'll... Okay. Use anyone's ideas. Yes, Mayor. Yes. I'm moving on. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council Member LaRomagnos. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so the Cities Association will be meeting this Thursday evening, March 10th. One of the items for discussion is an Assembly Bill 1944, which will, involves uh, councils who, uh, who use tele, uh, teleconferencing for their meetings in certain circumstances, uh, this bill would allow council members who are participating remotely in a meeting from revealing the address of their location um, as they're having their, their participation virtual. Uh, in the circumstance when there is a council member who is uh, participating virtually, uh, this would trigger requirements for the council to uh, provide certain live stream features for the meeting and an ability for uh, members of the public to participate virtually. So uh, there's some questions that remain that I need to have answered with regard to what happens for purposes of closed session, um, given the fact that it's hard sometimes to know who's kind of who in a, in a room or in a chat room, things like that. It also raises questions as to what happens when a council member might be calling in from a public location. So, for example, if a council member were on vacation in a hotel somewhere, uh, so it's not their private residence, but it's a, ostensibly a, a public location, um, what happens in that kind of circumstance? So, uh, so there are some questions that need to be uh, addressed. Um, what I will be later doing in this meeting is asking for a future council-initiated item that we look at AB 1944 as a council to decide if we want to take a position on this bill. And the reason why I'm, I'm asking for that is that the Cities Association, which represents all cities in the County of Santa Clara, will be taking a vote about a collective position. So I want to make sure that we all have an opportunity to discuss this 
before contributing to that larger collective decision. So do you, okay. So, so I, I was gonna wait, wait until the future, that's fine. but I can. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably the right time to do it. Okay, thank you. Um, my report, uh, two things. Um, one, the only meeting I've had since last Monday was a VTA board meeting, and there, there isn't anything I feel uh, needs to be reported out here. But I was going to, uh, I'm gonna piggyback a little bit on one council member, Lerone Mignot said, because I neglected to share at the February 28th meeting when I um, attended in council member Lerone Mignot's place that another item of discussion at Cities Association was in fact this very bill. And the things that came out of that meeting where I was present was um, pretty much a collective concern among all the cities that should this bill progress forward, that it does allow, that it would allow each local jurisdiction to vote on it themselves because each jurisdiction has different circumstances for this, that it address closed session and that, um, that it, it not be, that it is, it's meant to be for people who are, um, immune, comprom immune system compromised or have family illness or the examples used in the actual uh, bill summary is uh, someone has just had a baby and you're in the hospital and you don't want to disclose that address for people to come. And another is, of course, your home address where you're remaining because you're ill. But where this could go, if not careful, is that people, uh, council members could tele- or uh, elected officials could ask to teleconference in for their own convenience, making them less accessible to the public. And in fact, we are all supposed to be accessible to the public. We are here for the public, and the public has a right to see, see you when you're on the dais, to know how you're deliberating, what you're deliberating, what you're, what you're considering, and certainly in closed session if anybody else is around. So that's it for that. Okay, moving on to future council initiated items. And so at this time, Madam Mayor, I would then ask that AB 1944 be brought back for a council discussion on a potential position on the bill. Okay, thank you. Um, council, yeah, <laughs> we're all, okay, that's a unanimous of the five of us, so thank you. I think that's a great idea. All right, uh, we're on to the consent calendar. Um, does anybody wish to remove an item from the consent calendar? Okay, seeing none, I, well, let me, I need to, right, I need to open public comment first. Do we have any public comments? I do not have any public comments at this time. Okay, then I will close the public comment period, and does this need to be roll call, or can we digitally vote? It's a roll call vote, but since it's here, we'll just say it out loud. <laughs> So who's the motion? Is the motion was made by <clears throat> Council Member Bracco and seconded by, was it seconded? It wasn't. Oh, I, Council I, Member I Lerone Munoz. I mean, Council Member Lerone Munoz made it. Okay. Okay. Council Member Armanderas? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Count, uh, Council Member uh, Hilton is absent. Council Member Lerone Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Uh, Council Member Tovar is absent. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right. Item seven, bids and proposals, we have none. Item eight, public hearings, we have none. Item nine, unfinished business, there is none. Item 10, introduction of new business. General plan and housing element, annual progress report. Cindy, you are up. It's on, but it's not fading. Can we just wash it up there? Yeah. I apologize, Madam Mayor. Yeah. No, that's fine. We can see it over here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, All right. Let's go ahead. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here in person tonight. Before I start my presentation, I just want to thank all of the city staff who contributed to the information that went into this report, everyone from the police department to recreation, 
uh, economic development, public works. Um, there, a lot of work went into this and, and we have our city staff to thank for that. So why are we here this evening? California Government Code 65400 directs us to um, following adoption of the general plan to send a report to the Governor's Office of uh, Planning and Research and to the Department of Housing and Community Development by April 1st of this of each year. And we are to report in our progress of implementing the general plan, our uh, meeting our regional housing needs assessment, and our progress in removing governmental constraints such as um, uh, codes and ordinances. The uh, government code also directs us to recommend reasonable and practical means for implementing the general plan. And in our general plan, the 2040 general plan, we have priority programs, and those have been listed in your report. And as we uh, implement those programs, they can be reassessed um, or adjusted. And we can also look to our general plan implementation programs when adopting department work plans and budgets. In your report, I have highlighted those priority programs, and I'm not going to go through each of these here, but um, as you know, the zoning ordinance update is underway and should be coming to the City Council by the end of this year. Uh, a number of grants have been applied for, and as you heard uh, this evening, have been granted that will help um, in some of our goals from the downtown specific plan. And then earlier, um, Last year, the Historic Heritage Commission reviewed the Historic Preservation Ordinance and made streamlining recommendations um, to that ordinance. Last year, we also adopted objective design standards for multifamily and mixed-use residential projects, and that was one of our goals in the plan. Um, as you'll hear this uh, here later this evening, um, and you heard from Councilmember Marks, we have um, a priority for looking at the Gourmet Alley, the Gilroy Sports Park, and the Gilroy Gardens Hillside property, and there's information in your report on that. And then, uh, as I mentioned, there's a, a number of, of programs that are listed in your report, but I'm just highlighting a few here. And the Community Engagement Program, so we have our monthly uh, Mayor Spotlight, Conversation and Coffee, Town Hall Meetings with the City Administrator, and a number of events with our uh, police department, and those are listed here. So moving on to our regional housing needs allocation for the 2015 to 2023 planning period, the state has indicated that we need to plan for 1,088 residential units, new construction units, and you can see our progress here. So last year, we, um, permitted eight very low income units. And those are all, by the way, um, accessory dwelling units. So the state is now allowing us to uh, category, categorize 30% of those in the very low income category. 119 low income uh, re, uh, apartment units, one moderate income apartment unit, and 19 accessory dwelling units in the moderate income category and then 128 above moderate income units, uh, primarily in uh, Glen Loma. What we have remaining are 89 very low income units and 131 moderate income units. And what I plan to do is to go back and look at previous progress reports and see if we can count any of our accessory dwelling units towards the very low and moderate income categories. And so we can update the council on um, how that happens. I wanted to also give you an update on the 2023 to 2031 housing element, which is part of uh, the general plan. The, uh, later this week, I'm hoping to get out community surveys um, on the housing needs in the community, and those will be in both Spanish and English. And then we're going to start scheduling stakeholder focus group interviews um, our housing consultant will be managing all of these um, community events. And then on March 30th, we are tentatively planning a housing workshop. And so we'll have more information on that on the city's website and also in the city newsletter. With that, staff is recommending that the city council accept the 2021 general plan and housing element 
and direct us to transmit the information to the appropriate state agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. All right, council members, uh, questions of staff? Council member Leroman Yos. Thank you, and Cindy, thank you for a, a very detailed report here. L let me ask, it's kind of embarrassing, I've forgotten, but what is the, can you remind us, what does the state do with these reports? Do they just <laughs> file them away, or do they look at them and they say, oh, you're making progress, or no, you need to do better? What, what do they do with this? Well, so the government code says that they, they look at this and they make sure that we are doing what we said we're gonna be doing, and it, it, um, it seems like they're taking a closer look at these things now. We mm -hmm. have a new housing accountability office right. that's looking at these sort of things. So um, Gilroy is in good shape, so I'm not worried at all. Okay, so yeah, see. I mean, it seems like, believe me, I know that we're doing our part. It's mm -hmm. another story for other cities, but I'll leave that alone. So thank you. All right. I don't see anyone else up there. I'll just say I, that. Oh, I have a hand up. You have a hand up? I pressed here to speak. Oh, no. I, I just can't see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, <laughs> Cindy, can you tell me the ADU numbers again? Which um, ADUs account for all of the all of the very low, low, and moderate income units that were built? Yeah, so we had twenty seven. Hold on, we had twenty seven accessory dwelling units. We counted eight towards the very low income category. That's about thirty percent of the twenty seven, and the nineteen towards the moderate income category. The other uh, moderate income unit is a, a moderate priced um, apartment building or apartment unit. Okay. And, and I will tell you, uh, there are a number of accessory dwelling unit permits in the pipeline, and so you'll see more of these next year. Thank you. And then the units at First and Kern, um, do they fall under uh, extremely, very, or just low income? Low income. All of them? Well, okay. one is a moderate income unit. Okay. That's the uh, manager's unit. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. You're welcome. I have one question. If no one else does. Um, no, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, how, why is it? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carol. Um, I just can't tell I, who's I was wondering. Speak. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was wondering, Cindy, um, let's use the anti-graffiti program. So if something isn't working, do you, how often is our programs reassessed to make sure that they're on course and if something's not working, it gets tweaked? Well, the, the anti-graffiti program is, is managed by the police department. Um, so I, I would imagine that if it's, you know, they're gonna reassess, you know, every month or so when they're going out on calls to see what's working. But based on the number of calls that the police department has received, I would say that it's working. Okay, all right, thank you. And we do, and we do have a, a code enforcement officer who also routinely goes out and, and looks for issues. Does anyone else have a hand raised that I can't see? Okay, my question is, do you know if, when, when this report goes to the state, do, do you get any feedback as to how Gilroy's doing compared to other cities? I, we don't get I, any feedback at all. In my years, I've never heard from the state on, on a report. Um, okay. But. I was just curious because I think we all know that these are goals and um, no city actually meets these goals, but it is what we are all supposed to strive for. And um, we do our best, and I just wondered how we compare city by city, but we wouldn't know that. Okay. All right. Thank we, you. Um, sure. I, I, think I, I will say you can, uh, the, the state does have, um, you can look at other cities' uh, arena numbers to see where they are. Uh, uh, yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think it's time to open public comment. Yes, Madam Mayor, we have one public comment from Joanne Fierro. Okay. Yes. Okay, my public comment has to do with the housing element and the extremely low and very low categories. I know they're the most difficult to do. I also know that the housing element for the future is being worked on right now. This, this is what we're reporting right now is done. You know, 2023 it ends. We have, and we have an eight year ahead of us of whatever we decide to work on. So I'm just asking please that we can prioritize the extremely low, very low, come up with some good ideas 
some new ideas, innovative. I know it's been sent to consultants and I know there's gonna be a town hall and we'll all be there. But I'm just asking if we could just make that a priority. I think it's really important. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any others? No other comments, Mom. Okay, Mayor. then I'll close the public hearing and uh, now need a motion to accept the report and direct staff to transmit the report to the appropriate agencies. Okay, that looks like it's uh, unanimous with the five of us here? Yes, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, item 10.2, potential City of Gilroy justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, JEDI policy. And Jimmy is gonna give that staff report. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Member of City Council. Uh, back in September of 2021, there was a council initiated item uh, to return uh, with a potential equity and inclusion policy for the city boards, commissions, and committee. Uh, and so this item is agendized for this evening. Staff has a, a little bit different recommendation than the council initiated item, but we, we feel it may be more appropriate. And we have had discussions in past meetings about an overall policy for the city and such, and so we're making a recommendation tonight that council provide direction and authorization for the city to enter a, uh, to solicit for a request for proposals for some um, someone to help us with an overall organizational, uh, as you said, JEDI, uh, Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Plan that will enable us to filter it down into council, into our boards and commissions, to our employees, uh, to everyone involved with the city, as opposed to doing just boards and commissions at this time. So we, we've heard some feedback, we're taking that to heart, but we also have the ability to, to, to kind of piggyback on some what our, our neighbors have done. Um, one size does not fit all for every community, so it's important that we have somebody who can facilitate that discussion with our council members, our community, our employees, um, and, and, and see what works exactly for Gilroy. Um, we have listed a few examples of Los Gatos, Mount Morgan Hill, and Mountain View, and Palo Alto that have just recently gone through a process like that, and they tailored it to their community. So uh, we would like to start on that process to satisfy the council-initiated item and see what this will cost us as well. And um, depending on that, we will return to council with a recommendation to either um, you know, to, to seek funding for that or get approval for this type of direction as we go down the path in doing this policy. Uh, I do believe that uh, it's, a, it's a good thing for us to do now, as we've seen several cities do, do it, and uh, it has become quite productive and uh, positive in their communities, and I think it will be for ours as well. So we'd like to get the council uh, to accept recommendation that we move forward with an organizational um, JEDI policy as opposed to just one for boards and commissions. Uh, that concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, uh, council questions. I'm gonna hope they show up on the screen now. All right, I, okay, council member Armendariz. Um, I, I appreciate the staff's recommendation. I think it's um, a good idea because it's out of the wheelhouse of our staff members, um, certainly for us to try to um, draft this kind of language and bring to the table you know, the expertise and the nuances that, that this kind of policy calls for. Um, and so I'll, I'll be supporting staff's recommendation. Great. Thank you. Council Member LaRoman Yost. Thank you, uh, City Administrator. I appreciate the report. And, and yeah, echoing the, the previous comment, I think it makes a lot of sense to have an external group come in that has the expertise um, and the experience uh, doing this kind of thing. My only question would be what elements or characteristics or traits will we be looking for in firms that would be able to provide this as we're considering who might be a candidate? I think the most telling component is uh, their credibility and experience in other communities. Um, you can, the nice thing about this process is that there's a work product mm -hmm. and we are able to look at that and see, does this make sense to us? Is it mm -hmm. something we would recommend to our council that we would fit our community? So I think that is the primary um, qualification is uh, their work product. Got it. Great. That makes sense. Thank you. Council Member Bracco. Um, Jimmy, do you have any idea how much these people charge? Have you asked the other cities? We have asked some, and it is a little bit of an a la carte menu. Um, it can be quite low amount of money. I believe Los Gatos was around $50,000 to do. 
their particular policy, but we don't, we know, it's not cookie cutter, so that's probably the range we're looking at, but we've been surprised before by costs, so. Have you or any of the staff looked at the other cities' policies? Yes, yes we have. Um, and do any of them match us? Where we wouldn't have to pay, we could just adopt one from somebody else? Well, that if, if we were to do that, I think that would be a really big mistake on our part because we want to make sure that the policy that we have, even if it incorporates other pieces of other cities, is truly you know, reflective of Gilroy. So we may end up in that spot, but we don't know that yet. Okay. Okay, Jimmy, um, maybe I'm misreading the staff report, but I thought under analysis it is listing seven cities that do not have a single justice, equity, diversion, and inclusion policy document, but rather an objective. So are you referring, are you saying in, in the case of Los Gatos, for example, that the, the policy objective is what you're talking about here? Right, and so they decided in some of these cities that a, a policy objective was appropriate for them. That could be the case for us as well, but they all went through a similar process to get to that point. And so that's what I want to introduce us to. And we may decide that, you know, the way Los Gatos did it or Morgan Hill did it is perfect for us. Uh, we may also decide that it's not. So there's, like I said, there's a ton of different ways to do this, and uh, we're going to have to figure out what, what's most appropriate for us. Right, but if we give direction to you to do that, then you're going to come back to us with something more closely, okay, because it is sort of open-ended right now. We don't know if this is a $50,000 endeavor or a $100,000 endeavor or more. And so that's not something that um, anybody was thinking about, I think, when we decided to agendize this, as important of an item it is. It may be something that you just, you have a policy for and don't need to be spending uh, money that we sorely need in other areas. And I will point out that some of these organizations like Palo Alto and San Jose, they have a whole department of equity inclusion. I don't know I, that that's where we're going to be able to get. Yeah. So that's why I'm a little reticent to, you know, tell you how this could end up. But... We certainly um, will look at all options and bring that back to council. Okay, so with that, I'm going to open the public comment period and ask if we have anybody wanting to speak on this item. I did not receive any public speaker cards, Madam Mayor. Okay, you six are making it easy. Okay, <laughs> I will close, close the public comment and um, looking for possible action. I'll make a motion. Oh, you start the vote. To accept um, staff's recommendation to solicit RFPs for the development of our own JEDI plan. Okay, is that seconded? And I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Okay, and we can vote here. I know. Did did it register? Mm -hmm. No, it didn't. Okay, I vote yes. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not showing up. Uh, I'll second my own motion. You know, I'll just do a roll call vote. Just okay, call. let's okay. do a roll call vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, the motion was made by uh, Councilmember Armendariz and seconded by Co Councilmember Lito Munoz. Yes. Okay. Councilmember Armendariz? Yes. Councilmember Bronco? Yes. Uh, Councilmember uh, uh, Hilton is absent. Councilmember Lira Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar is absent. And Mayor Blankley? Yes. Okay, that passed unanimously with the five of us here. All right, item 11, City Administrator's Reports. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, earlier, uh, Councilmember Marks mentioned the city's $3.9 million award uh, as part of the California Clean Grant Program. Um, we were the only city in the county of uh, Santa Clara to receive a grant, and yeah. per capita, we probably received one of the largest, you know, per population, so we're very excited about that. Um, this grant does numerous things for the downtown and railroad areas of, of, of the city, including uh, significant infrastructure improvements, roads, um, beautification efforts, including, uh, you know, uh, trash enclosures, consistency and signage, um, garbage cans, cleanup days, uh, numerous different activities that we believe will put a significant shot in the arm uh, to the downtown movement. Uh, but the focus of the, the grant was, in fact, Gourmet Alley. 
And so uh, when we looked at the three initiatives that council has that we've been working on for a long time, uh, this was a, a very welcome surprise. Um, I will tell you, most of the time you submit a grant and you kind of like, well, we'll see where this goes and you don't have your hopes up, but uh, it's nice to be surprised in a good way every once in a while. So uh, I'm very excited and uh, we will be returning to council in um, probably in June or to July to accept the grant. Um, and then it will be a 100% uh, reimbursable expenditure. So we will do the projects that are listed in the grant and the state will pay us back with no matching required. Uh, I do wanna thank a couple of employees who really did the, um, the heavy lifting on the grant application and that's George Duran, Duran, who is an engineer over at Public Works and also Corinne Baker, who is the economic development analyst. Decker, Decker. Decker what did I say? Baker. Baker, wow. <laughs> um, Decker. <laughs> and uh, who also worked with uh, Downtown Business Association, our partners at Visit Gilroy, the Chamber, to get some input into the grant uh, so we can make sure that the, uh, the dollars that we have are used uh, wisely and to the benefit of downtown and the city in general. So um, there's much more work to do. Um, we're not giving up. This isn't the only money we're looking for, but if somebody tells you that the city never applies for a grant, well, we, we got this one. So um, that'll, that'll get us some you know, some good money for a while. Uh, the last thing I do want to say about the grant is that um, there will be uh, some public input process. Uh, the grant was, uh, was submitted intentionally uh, not to be too specific. And so some cities will list listed the size of their trash cans and the color and who was going to make them. We intentionally did not do that to give us an opportunity to be flexible. And also there is a word in this grant called beautification and as we all know beauty is in the be eye of the beholder and beautification is in the eye of the grant holder as well so uh, we will try to use that to our greatest advantage in order to uh, to allocate this money um, where it's greatly needed but um, that was a good win for the city of Gilroy yeah. and we deserved it so, great job thank you. thank you Jimmy for that report okay I see we have two council members wanting to ask a question council member Armanderas no, oh, that's, that's left over. Yeah. Oh. Sue's doing its own thing tonight. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Madam Mayor, I do have one uh, public comment speaker. Okay. Right. So pu public comment on on. Okay. And uh, that will be with Gary Walton. Okay. All right, Gary. Thank you, <clears throat> Mayor, and members of the City Council. Actually, it's a great day. 3.9 million, that's a, that's a great grant. <laughs> and, and to think that, you know, when we started the, the vision for Gourmet Alley, that was only 19 months ago. So to come this far and to have money available to help work on that vision, I think it's a great thing. On the barn, it took us five or six years to get the, the grants that we were looking for. So good job. <laughs> really um, think that it's a great thing for, for downtown. Reading the, the press release, it's a, a little vague, <laughs> and maybe it was intended to be that way. One of the issues that we had, we were asked at the ad hoc committee to really give a list of what we would like to see from the city. And so we really would like to get a little bit more detail on the grant so that we can kind of compare our list to what's in the grant so that we're not asking for things that aren't in the grant and we focus on the things that could be in the grant. So if we could get some more detail on what was applied in terms of the grant because I'm sure there was discussions with the different departments and how much money went for this and that we just need more detail and so if we could do that that would be great second thing that I just wanted to bring up real quick is that on the 26th we're going to have a cleanup on the alley between 4th and 7th and we're partnering with the city of Gilroy on that and I want to invite each one of the members of the city council and staff to come out and help us. We don't have the time set up, but it'll probably be in the morning and we'll probably work through the early afternoon to do that. And there'll be trash and vegetation. And so I recently read a little book and it had a quote in there. And I want to, it's an old African proverb and it kind of struck a chord with me. And it says, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk with others. And I just want to let you know that the Downtown Association is here for the city, for the downtown, and we look forward to that developing that partnership with the city. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? No other public comments, Madam Mayor. Okay. All right, city attorney's report. 
I have no report, but we do have a closed session, which I would, am pleased to announce if you would like to go there. Go right ahead. Next, next item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 54956.8 and Gilroy uh, city code section 17A882. Properties to Gilroy Sports Park, 5925 Monterey Frontage Road. APNs listed on the agenda. Negotiators, Jimmy Forbes, the city administrator. The other party is the Sharks Sports and Entertainment LLC. And under negotiations are price and terms of lease. So the first thing to do would be to ask for public comment. And after that, we adjourn to closed session, then take a vote to remain in closed session. All right. Do we have any public comment? I did not receive any public comments, Madam Mayor. Okay. Closing that. And um, asking for a vote. No, no. We, no. We, we don't need the vote to go into closed session, but we need to go into closed session and then vote to stay in. Okay. So we're going to go into closed session at 6.50 p.m. and then then vote to stay in closed session. <laughs> okay. Correct. <Right>. Okay. <laughs>